Today we're making pierogies. Hi and welcome to Black Cat Kitchen. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're making one of my all-time favorite suppers, pierogies. Pierogies are an Eastern European dumpling, and dumplings have homes in many countries all over the world, but this version today is an Eastern European version with potato and cheese filling. You wouldn't find a freezer in Canada without a bag of pierogies in them. They're a perfect, quick, easy meal for those nights that you are busy. You toss them in boiling water, you fried them up, and you are ready to go. I couldn't find them here in the UK in the freezer section, so I had to learn how to make them myself. And here's my recipe. Here are the ingredients you'll need for this recipe. Feel free to pause. I'll list the ingredients in the description below. We'll start by making our potato filling. So we're going to take our potatoes, wash them, peel them, and chop them up into little cube pieces. I've been watching too much Harry Potter and I've changed the color of my board. Tip your potatoes into a big pot and we are going to top it up with cold water, covering the potatoes with about an inch above them. While the potatoes are boiling, let's chop up our onion for the filling. So butter into the pan. We're gonna put our finely chopped onions in there. We're going to cook this on a fairly low heat and we want them to get to a nice golden color. We're going to liberally salt the water and then set it to boil. While those are cooking, let's get started on our dough. Into our flour, we're putting our salt, and we're just gonna give that a quick whisky whisk. We'll set that aside and put together our wet ingredients. Into our milk go our four eggs. Probably should have used a bigger jug for this. Let's get those eggs whisked up. And since I didn't use a big enough jug, I'm going to carefully add the water just to loosen it up a little bit. If I can't get it all in, I'll just add it once I put the wet mixture into the dough. Ooh, it's going to be close. And we got it. So we're going to put our wet right into our dry. going to form a very soft dough. To me, that's a bit too loose still, and it will depend on the type of flour that you use. Uh, I would recommend all-purpose in countries that have it. If you're using plain flour, you might need a little bit more because there isn't quite as much gluten. So just add a little bit at a time until you feel a soft dough that will eventually be rollable comes together. So you can see it's still quite sticky but it will come into a nice tender rollable dough after about an hour of resting. So we're just going to cover that up and let it sit for an hour while our potatoes finish cooking. Drain your potatoes, put them back into the pot, and give them a little mash. Add in your cheese, your butter, your golden onions, a sprinkle of salt, a good crack of black pepper, and a bit of finely grated nutmeg. Mash it all together and your filling is ready. And there's our dough nicely rested. You won't see any gain in size like a normal uh, yeasted dough. This has no yeast in it. But you will want to have that window pane. You can see there, you can see the light through there. It will be a little bit sticky, as you can tell from my fingers. That's not a bad thing. That will mean the pierogies cook up nice and tender, but we'll need a lot of flour when we're rolling it out. So we're going to liberally dust our work surface. We're going to work with small bits of dough at a time. So let's take a pinch off of our dough here really make sure you've got a lot of flour on your hands. So I normally do this through my KitchenAid pasta roller, but I'm going to show you one by hand so that you can get an idea if you don't have a roller. Get your rolling pin, again, liberally dust with flour, and you're going to want to roll it as thin as possible. You just want to keep moving it around your board 
so that it doesn't stick. If you need to add more flour, definitely do so. You want the dough to be fairly thin, probably about three to four millimeters. I'm using a hundred millimeter cutter and you just wanna make sure that you get them nice and separated from the remaining dough. So you can see how thin that is there. With the floury side down, set it aside until you've cut the rest of them. I like to fill as I go so that I know how much I've got left in terms of filling and, and pastry. And what I do is I use my handy dandy cookie scoop and I find it's the perfect amount of potato filling. So just get your filling in there, probably about just over a tablespoon I would say. And you want your filling to be fairly cool at this point. And then you're going to just kind of mold your potato filling into a half moon so that you can easily pull that pastry over without tearing it. And I like to keep a little bowl of water just set to the side there so that I can use it to help seal the dough. So just that little bit of water on the edge to seal it and then pull your dough over. And actually I find it easier to start in the center and work your way around the edges that gets all of the air out. And there's your beautiful pierogi. Now I set the pierogies that are filled aside on a greaseproof or wax paper uh, baking sheet that's very liberally dusted in flour. You can freeze them on a tray just like this and once they're frozen solid, pop them in a bag and leave them in the freezer for up to three months. You can cook them straight from frozen, just how I'll show you now. Thinly slice your onions, chop your bacon, and put them all into a frying pan on medium heat with a little bit of butter until the onions are golden brown. This recipe made about 60 pierogies. A serving size is anywhere from five to seven pierogies, so this will last us probably about two dinners for four people. Our water's come up to a boil and our bacon and onion has really cooked down and caramelized, so we're going to put that aside so that we can brown our pierogies. Bacon is optional, but recommended. To fry our pierogies, I like to fry them in brown butter. So I'm just going to put some butter in our bacon and onion pan, and I've turned this down a little bit so that it doesn't burn, but we want all of those milk solids in there to get nice and caramelized so we've got that flavor. And while that's going, we can get our pierogies on to boil. I like to drop in a few at a time, no more than five in a big pot like this, otherwise they might stick together. You'll cook them for about seven minutes or so until they start to come up to the top of the water and then we'll transfer them over to our frying pan. You can tell they're done when you notice you've got some flecks there. The dough has started to change color and you can see they're all really floating up to the top. So let's get them into our brown butter. So I've got these on medium low heat. We just want to crisp up the outside. So just a few minutes on either side. So you can have a look and see if they're, they're coming up. If you're afraid of them sticking, just give them a little wiggle in the pan and that butter will get underneath there and help move them around. This side won't take as long, maybe just 30 seconds. Like I said, we just want to crisp up the outside. I like to just dab my pierogies down on a kitchen roll or paper towel before I plate them up. Just helps up soak up some of that excess grease. And then I'm going to top it with some of that bacon and onion and a nice dollop of sour cream right on top. with the saltiness of that bacon. And then you've got that smooth, creamy sour cream that comes in and cuts through all of that fat. It is amazing. The dough has a nice bite to it. It's not quite, um, it's not mushy. It's got that really nice al dente feel. And then you've got that cheesy creaminess of the potato running through it. And you've got that just little hint of nutmeg and black pepper running through. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see why it's one of my favorites. Thanks for watching Black Cat Kitchen. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. See you next time.